Tape has just released Arc 8 Chapter 31, and this video will be a summary of the chapter. The stone, Muspel, is one of the four great spirits. Despite being known to exist in Valakia, not much information is known about Muspel, meaning it's the most spirit-like spirit there is. This was Beatrice explaining the history of the four great spirits. Subaru, of course, was not knowledgeable on the information regarding them. The story, however, clashes with reality. Muspel's location was said to be unknown, however, that isn't the case. Apparently, Muspel was supposed to be located in the citadel of the Garkla city. Subaru, with this new information, points out Abel, accusing him of knowing Muspel's location. However, Jamal, who is accompanying Abel, lashes out, stating that Subaru shouldn't dare talk to the Emperor like that, as he swings his sword and he cuts off the very tip of Subaru's finger. Abel tells them to stop quarrelling, stating there's no point in arguing with the Kingdom of Lagunica. With that, Jamal sheaves his sword. Subaru jokes that at this rate, Vincent will be assassinated, but Vincent says the most Imperial soldiers do act like that, but someone like Cecilus is a lot harder to manage. Abel answers Subaru's question, stating that Muspel's sanctuary is in the city, usually. Beatrice is surprised, since she remembers her mother saying that Muspel was the hardest great spirit to communicate with. We see that all of the great spirits are hard to communicate with, and Subaru says that he wishes Puck was back. Great spirits are like celebrities, however Subaru doesn't really get that excited. After all, he's met more interesting people with their own titles, such as the Sword Saint. Subaru asks what the words stone mean, and sanctuary. Abel explains that the word stone means that Muspel can manipulate the earth. Not only that, the land which Muspel resides in receives its protection. The soil is fruitful, and those who live on the land are granted nourishment. Otto is surprised by Abel's answer, not realizing Muspel's role in Valachia. In other words, where Muspel resides, the people will heal quicker and grow better similar to, for example, going to a nice hot spring. Julius and Anastasia wonder why they lied about Garkla being rebuilt, but were more truthful when it came to one of Volakia's founding pillars, in other words, the importance of Muspel. With Anastasia adding that revealing too much information to outsiders could harm Volakia. However, Amelia says that Abel didn't lie because it would be beneficial for them to know the truth showing that Abel is being sincere. Flop clapped and got people's attention, saying that the Emperor was telling the truth to indicate how dire the situation is. Roswell asks Flop if he believes that, in the worst case scenario, Valakia will be destroyed, and Flop says yes. After all, with Muspel's death, the great disaster would fully come to Valakia. Flop explains that it was the fake Emperor that entrusted Flop with the information to check to see if Muspel was being used by the undead. Flop says he doesn't know why the fake Emperor told him that information, but he likes to fulfill the duties he's been given. It's unknown what the goal of the fake Emperor was. He ousted Abel from the throne, and then he died. However, it was good luck that he entrusted Flop with the message. Abel is asked by Amelia if Muspel and someone in Valachia had a contract, but Abel states Muspel has no consciousness, so it's not really possible to negotiate with Muspel. Subaru says that it could be pure and innocent like him and Beatrice, but Abel says that it just looks like a child playing with a child. Subaru and Beatrice both puff out their cheeks hearing this from Abel. No contract was made to Muspel, however it resided in the Empire, so they made use of it. It would move through the bowels of the Empire, growing roots. 
Anastasia is confused, and Abel explains it's like the roots of a tree that spread out across the land. What would happen if you pulled out the tree and its roots? What would happen to the soil? Anastasia says that there would be holes in the ground, it would be weak and brittle, and it would collapse if prodded. In other words, the death of Muspel is the death of Valachia, a secret to the Empire that must be kept hidden. It's a ticking time bomb. Subaru jokes that Vincent may be thinking of keeping them all quiet when this is over, implying that he might kill them. However, Vincent says that he's given them the benefit of the doubt. Either way, the land of Valachia and Muspel were linked. If they killed the undead, then Muspel's mana would deteriorate. If you're killed, you would become an undead and therefore use Muspel's mana. So it's wise to not kill many undead or to have casualties. It was an absurd thing to do. You couldn't kill the enemy as it would harm Muspel. Emilia wonders what, why Sphinx would do this. The identity and plans of the witch were revealed in, in incredible details. However, Emilia wonders on the motive. Despite that, Emilia affirms that she cannot let Valachia be destroyed. Julius asserts that the plan is probably combining the sacred, the sacrament of the immortal king with the earth magic of Muspel to destroy Valachia, and then afterwards, Sphinx would then head to the kingdom of Lagunica to attack Lagunica. In other words, Valachia isn't even the prime target. Gosh shouts in anger, saying that Valachia is going to be destroyed in the nick of time. However, Anastasia says that Valachia is probably the precursor to the real target, which is the Lagunica, meaning that the whole Muspel thing was planned ages ago. However, Subaru talking to Beatrice and Roswell will see that they believe that Julius is half right. Either way, the Prime Minister states that they need to destroy their enemies. Subaru and Beatrice wish they could have had a dialogue with Sphinx to understand her motive fully. However, of course, Sphinx used return by death in a way to run away from them. Of course, by the way, I'm using that term loosely because Sphinx died on purpose so she could regrow her body elsewhere. In short, they couldn't form a large army, since having armies fight with the undead army would greatly reduce Muspel's mana. On top of that, if they waited around, more undead will be created, therefore whittling down Muspel's mana. In other words, there wasn't really a condition to victory, and Valachia would be doomed to fail. With that, all eyes pointed to Abel, and Abel states that they will assemble a small force of elite soldiers and then extract the witch, allowing them to destroy the Great Calamity. The final phase of the Great Calamity had to be stop stopped, he asserted. The scene changes. The meeting came to an end, and the elite members of the invasion squadron would be selected. The Prime Minister and the Emperor were the only ones left in the room and the Prime Minister states he didn't realise that Muspel was in Garkla. At this time, the sacred place should be in Mesioria. Both Vincent and the Prime Minister were outsmarted by Chisha, who was one step ahead of them. Not only that, they discuss how they must keep a secret on how Muspel is secured. Subaru and Emilia have innocent minds, so they wouldn't like the fact that Valachia uses death row inmates the contract with Muspel, and then afterwards the death row inmates are disposed of when necessary. Back when he was asked if Muspel was contracted, Abel stated that Muspel has no ability to form a contract on its own. That wasn't a lie, but a fact. In reality, the way to keep Muspel stationary is to form a contract with it, and then it will stay in place with its contractor. However, as Muspel has no consciousness, you cannot negotiate a contract with it. However, there is something you can do. If you seemingly force a contract with Muspel, you will share your sensations with Muspel 24-7, and the human psyche wouldn't be able to withstand those sensations. The human cannot remain unharmed. By crippling a human sacrifice, Muspel stays in its location. So death row inmates are made to forcibly contract with Muspel to move around the areas of Valachia that require its blessing. 
Before the capital battle, Trisha Gold stole Muspel and moved Muspel to Garkla. However, the human contracted to Muspel was nowhere to be found, and now Muspel was gone. And therefore, the way to find Muspel is essentially to find the witch. Vincent thinks, apart from that, maybe a hound with a very good nose could find Muspel, but that was a long shot. The scene changes. At the same time, in the Imperial capital, in the darkness, he lay on the cold, hard ground, injured. The reason he doesn't move is not due to the damage to his body, but to the damage of the soul. What he believed and prayed for was cast to the ground. He had lost the meaning of life, the meaning of his existence. Princess Summer, he mutters. He mutters the name of the person whose meaning he has been denied. He keeps muttering weakly. And with that, the chapter ends. So of course, that's Aldebaran at the, uh, on the floor at the end. So a bit about what's going on. So it seems like Muspel is absent without leave. leave. We don't know where he is. Um, so essentially the way it works, if you didn't really understand it, um, they would get a death row inmate to contract with Muspel, and then they would move that crippled person to say, I don't know, um, Mes Mesioria, and then Muspel would go to Mesioria because that's where the contracted person is. So Muspel would just follow whoever the person um, is that they, Muspel's contracted with. And then when that person gets killed, They'll contract Muspel to, say, a different death row inmate in, say, um, Garkla. And then Muspel will move to Garkla. And that's essentially what they do. And whoever contracts with Muspel will become, essentially, uh, crippled, um, based on the text. But yeah, it seems like the, the person that's contracted to Muspel is nowhere to be found. So it's highly likely that Spinks has taken that person. And therefore, Muspel is following along with Spinks. 